By the early 1700s, whaling records showed the same result everywhere. There were no sightings, no kills, and no survivors. The Atlantic grey whale was declared extinct. So why did one suddenly reappear? Extinction is not a guess, it is a conclusion reached when evidence stops arguing back. For the Atlantic population of the grey whale, that conclusion felt tight. Grey whales are coastal migrants. They travel close to shore, feed in shallow waters, and follow predictable routes across the ocean. That made them easy targets during the peak of commercial whaling. Ships didn't need luck to find them. They needed patience and barrels. By the late 1600s, European whaling fleets had stripped the North Atlantic of accessible whale populations. Old documents and logs from ports in Spain, England and the Netherlands show a steady collapse, with fewer hunts, shorter voyages and smaller returns. Grey whales vanished first because they were the easiest to reach. Unlike deep diving species, they could not hide offshore. They surfaced where people lived. The biology made the math unforgiving. Grey whales reproduce slowly. They have a single calf every few years. Heavy coastal hunting does not wound a population like that. It simply erases it. By the early 1700s, the records went quiet. No stranded carcasses, no reported sightings, no bones washing ashore. The Atlantic grey whale did not fade. It stopped. Silence became the evidence. For centuries after, the absence held. Biologists catalogued whales across the Atlantic and found nothing that fit. Fishermen who knew the difference between a right whale and a humpback never reported grey whale behaviour. The bottom feeding plumes, the mottled skin, the shallow water rolls. Even as other species clawed back from near extinction, this one stayed missing. Scientists did not call it extinct because it felt right. They called it extinct because every in in independent line of evidence pointed the same way. When extinction is declared, it is because time has done the testing for us. Generations pass, habitats recover, and still nothing returns. Grey whales in the Pacific survived because they had space. Their migration ran along the western edge of North America, feeding in the Bering and Chukchi seas. The Atlantic route, by contrast, was boxed in. Ice once blocked any northern passage between oceans. There was no known way for a Pacific grey whale to reach the Atlantic without crossing barriers that stayed frozen for most of recorded history. Two populations, permanently separated. One gone, and one alive. By the 20th century, the Atlantic grey whale existed only in textbooks. It became a reference point, not a research subject. Extinction, in this case, was treated as settled science. Then the ocean decided to complicate things. As Arctic ice patterns began to shift, passages once locked for centuries started opening during short summer windows. These were not highways. They were narrow, temporary corridors of cold water threading between ice. For most species, they did not matter. For a whale built to migrate thousands of kilometers along continental shelves, they suddenly did. When the first modern Atlantic grey whale sighting was reported off the coast of Israel in May 2010, the reaction was not excitement. It was skepticism, because misidentification happens. Whales are hard to judge at sea, and photos can be misleading. Then more images appeared from other sightings, with clearer angles, a distinctive body shape, and behavior that did not match any Atlantic species. So this animal was not supposed to be there. Even with several sightings, scientists have no clear idea how many of these animals are currently venturing into the oceans. 
Researchers compared photographs to known Pacific individuals, noting the mottled skin pattern, the absence of a dorsal fin, and the way it fed near the bottom. The pieces lined up uncomfortably well. Genetic sampling later confirmed what maps said could not happen. A grey whale had crossed oceans that were once closed. The extinction was not wrong, it was outdated. The Atlantic population truly vanished centuries ago. What returned was not a comeback, not a recovery, but a biological contradiction. A lone survivor of a different population exploiting a window that had not existed in human memory. What unsettled scientists most was not that a grey whale appeared in the Atlantic. It was how easily it broke assumptions that had held for centuries. This whale was not injured or lost. It was feeding. Grey whales are benthic feeders, rolling onto their sides and sucking mouthfuls of sediment from the seafloor, filtering out small crustaceans with their baleen. That behavior was observed again in Atlantic waters, exactly as it happens in the Pacific. The animal was not surviving by accident. It was doing what grey whales are built to do. Adult grey whales can reach 14 to 15 meters in length and weigh more than 35 tons. They are not deep divers like sperm whales, but they are endurance specialists. Their migrations are among the longest of any mammal on Earth, stretching over 16,000 kilometers round trip. Crossing an Arctic corridor, even a narrow and temporary one, was physically possible once ice conditions allowed it. What changed was not the whale, it was the map. Satellite data and historical ice records show that parts of the Northwest Passage and the Northern Sea Route have experienced longer seasonal openings in recent decades. These windows are unpredictable and dangerous, filled with drifting ice and freezing temperatures. But for an animal evolved to navigate cold, shallow, coastal seas, they are no longer absolute barriers. The reappearance forced researchers to confront an uncomfortable idea. Extinction, at least in the ocean, may not always be a permanent state. It may be conditional. That does not mean extinction was misdiagnosed. The Atlantic grey whale population truly disappeared. No breeding groups remain. No calves have been documented. One animal crossing oceans does not undo centuries of loss. What it does undo is the belief that once a species vanishes from a basin, it can never return. The ocean does not respect human rules. From a scientific perspective, this creates a strange problem. Conservation status is built around populations, not individuals. A single whale does not make a recovery, but it does expose how dynamic marine systems really are. Oceans connect places we treat as separate. Currents move heat, nutrients, and now, once again, animals across boundaries we assumed were closed. There is also a darker side to this story. The same changes that opened a path for the grey whale are destabilizing ecosystems across the Arctic. Ice loss does not just create corridors. It alters prey distributions, predator ranges, and human activity. Shipping traffic increases. Noise spreads into previously quiet waters. New hazards replace old barriers. The ocean gave this whale a route but it did not make the journey safe. In that sense, the reappearance is not a victory lap. It is a warning. The Atlantic Grey Whale did not come back because the world healed. It came back because the world shifted. The conditions that erased it centuries ago are being replaced by different risks, not fewer ones. Survival now depends on navigating a moving target. This is why scientists are careful with their language. The whale is not proof that extinction is reversible. It is proof that certainty in the ocean has an expiration date. Conclusions drawn from stable conditions do not always survive change. And the ocean is changing faster than our definitions can keep up. Somewhere beneath the surface, the boundaries we draw between gone and alive are blurrier than we like to admit. If one whale can rewrite a map after 200 years of absence, it forces a difficult question. 
How many other conclusions are waiting for the environment to prove them temporary? If you enjoy watching nature quietly overrule our confidence, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to see what happened when humans decided whales were easier to catalogue than to protect, watch the video titled The Shocking Things Humans Killed Sperm Whales For.